Am I on? Oh my gosh. <laughs> What's going on? Oh. This is so exciting. It's my first Instagram live. Instagram okay. live. I have to tell you, it's my second, so I'm not totally sure how to do this, but say hi to everybody from the TC studio. Oh my where oh my God. Are. You know okay. what it's like here. I am going to get kicked out of here in like five minutes because they are having the real TC live show, but for now, we all sit in Martina's seat. Is that bad? What no, I think, I think you're good. I think you're, I, don't, I don't think she'll mind. No. <laughs> okay, so Chanda, how old do you feel when I say that it was 25 I, years ago? Yeah, I can't. You know, Michael Payson said that, and I was like, what? what am I that old? It's like, in the, what happened to the time? <laughs> so I mean, for a little background for anyone watching, it was the 1996 Australian Open. Chanda and I would have both been 19. Yeah. And we played each yes. other um, in the Australian Open women's doubles final. Uh, what a lot of people might not know is Chanda and I grew up together in the juniors, being the same birth year, 1976, um, played in the juniors. We mm -hmm. traveled together on the USTA national team for the yep. juniors, for the pro tour. One of my most devastating losses. What, to me? No, our junior French Open girls. Double oh. final. We lost like 10 8 in the third. Do you remember? I, I, I really you had not brought that up again. Like, that was so, that was probably the worst I felt. Crazy. Uh, one of the worst times I felt, you know, in terms of a loss. Uh. We lost, <laughs> like, like I said, 10 8 or something in the third. I think I cried all night. So you finally, we were sharing a room. You're like, would you knock that <laughs> off over there? And we were like, what, 14 or 15 or something? <laughs> I think around 15. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, okay. So oh my. here we are, like it would have been four or five years later in a mm -hmm. Grand Slam real doubles final. Yes. Um, yeah. And going into it, it was like your just unbelievable singles tournament. Yeah. I was having a fantastic tournament. You know, got to the semifinals in the singles. Actually, played Arancha, who I was playing doubles with. Played her in the quarterfinals, and we had this marathon match. But I, it was it was my best major. It was my best Grand Slam, and to be in the semis of the singles and doubles was incredible. Okay, so I mean, let's it, go over everyone you beat the singles. So, so you beat Arancha. Did you also beat Sabatini? I think so. I think I read that. Yeah, I think so. I, I have to I have to look back at the singles road. But yeah, I mean, it was tremendous because to beat her and keep it going, because you know how tough it is when you have a big win and it's easy to have a letdown. You're at a major. It's a lot of attention. And so to keep it going after those wins was unbelievable. And then um, you played the legend Monica Sellis in the semis. That was Monica's first slam yeah. back. No, second slam. I think she played the 95 U.S. Was, Open. Okay. And then I think it was just her second slam back from her terrible incident that happened in 93. Um, and you battled her in the semis. Yeah, it would be the only one she would win after coming back. But we played in the semis. I lost to her in three sets. First, the only time I'd played her, um, just because of how, you know, when I turned pro and sort of, you know, when... The incident happened. She was out for a couple of years. And so it was a big moment for me just walking onto the court against her. Like I've been seeing her on TV and how big she hits the ball. And I didn't even know if I could hang, to be honest. And I ended up going three sets. But um, it was it was amazing. I, I don't like to think about the fact that I was up 5-2 in the third. Oh, no, we forget those things. <laughs> oh, so let's like not. Okay, I mentioned it. Let's move on. <laughs> It was it was unbelievable, you know, the, the entire tournament. Yeah. Okay. So how did you end up getting Arancha as a partner for that major? I mean, she asked. Oh, that's and, I mean, that was it was as simple as that. That was the first time we played together. And she I forget who she had been playing with at the time. But for some reason, you know, she didn't have a partner. And I don't think I was even playing with anybody consistently at that little juncture. And so I was like, of course, heck yes. Arancha, I mean, you know, she's a legend. Um, and so, yeah, we played first tournament and it was it, it, unbelievable <laughs> the way we kept winning. Um, and, you know, Arancha and her mentality, she is just so intense and, you know, she's like, let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. And that kind of kept me pumped up. And so, yeah, we had a, an incredible run. One of like, the, uh, they sent me all these notes. So I would remember 
um, about this. You double. remember everything? No, way. you had a memory like an elephant. Is that the saying? You uh, definitely remember something or an insert. <laughs> Uh, but okay, so they 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 sent me everyone who we played. This is actually one of the funniest stories that I have. I was playing with Mary Jo Fernandez, yeah. and we went out to play our first round match, and we'd never heard of these two players. And we get out there, and Mary Jo's like, "Who are we playing?" And she's like the type of player that would always be nervous about playing anybody. Like it wouldn't matter if they were unranked or ranked one. So we get out on the court, and there was a an, a great great player from Belgium, Dominique Monami. Yeah. And we get, we were playing Murich and Van Roost. So we uh -huh. get out on the court and all of a sudden Mary Jo looks at me and goes, that's Dominique Monami. What is she doing on the court? And so Mary Jo walks right up to her and said like, what are you doing here? And she said, oh, I got married and my last name is Van Roost now. And Mary Jo walks over like, great, we're gonna get chopped because she's so good and we had no idea. Didn't even know, she didn't know that's who she was playing. No, we didn't know she got married, okay. Before we continue, I'm getting kicked out. Everybody say hi to John Wertheim, Martina, and Steve. <laughs> Woo! Hey, guys. Is this a Netflix watch party? A Netflix watch party, maybe. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put my mask on. Chanda. Anybody else want to say hi to Chanda? Hey, friends. Hi. I miss you guys already. <laughs> okay, hey, so Martina. I'm going to move. They're going to actually do this real show. So walk with me here. And we Safe. That's number one. So yep. we follow uh, a lot of guide, all the guidelines that's here. So I'm going to go over to my safe spot where I can take my mask off again to continue this. <laughs> this is I'm Tennis Channel's wall Fortune. here for those of you yeah. who might want to see. We've got Venus. We have Isner. This is our wall, Hall of Fame wall. We've got Osaka. We've got the Bryan brothers. And we've got, of course, Mr. How do I do this? Mr. Federer. And I'm going to sit down right here to continue this. So where's yours, Lindsay? Where's your picture? I didn't make the wall. Did you? If you didn't make the wall, I didn't make the wall. <laughs> I didn't make the wall. <laughs> but then I see Serena and Barty and Murray and Zverev. It goes, it goes down a long way. Maybe we're just yeah. like around the corner. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So getting back to that doubles, um, it was really hard to play you in the final. We, like I said, had I, so much history and we're such good friends. And for our first Grand Slam finals to then have to play each other, that was a really weird feeling. Right. I mean, you know, obviously you mentioned it. We played doubles together along with all of that. And I also, with Mary Jo, was on the Fed Cup team and practiced with her. And we were good friends. And so it was strange, first of all, to be in a major final, number one, which is yeah. a big moment. But then to have to play your friends on top of it. And I have to say, Arantxa was so helpful because... She just kept me like focused and plugged in, okay? Cause she knew <laughs> all the dynamics of it. And she was such a veteran. She was such an experienced class player. And she just like, okay, let's stay focused. We stay focused, we stay focused. Okay, you're gonna do this, we're good. And so the whole match, I kind of just kept my eye on what I was needing to do tennis wise and not thinking so much about being friends. Um, but yeah, it was, it was tough. It was incredibly it, hard. It was tough, but I don't remember any Thing in the particular match like I don't remember were, were we up or were you up at one time I know it was close in the third I think you guys went 6-4 in the third right it was yeah the first set was close um and I think we won the first set um but I don't know if you guys were up then or not I think it was pretty pretty straightforward it was just tough and competitive yeah you know like you know games were tight and you know Ranch is moving I'm trying to you know hit big and <laughs> Just doing like the normal stuff, trying to avoid your serve when we could. Like, I think just... it was, do you remember? I think it was indoors. Does that ring a bell? Was the roof closed? I didn't think it was. Yeah. It was closed? I think I, I have these visions. I remember losing. I remember being super upset. And I think like for some reason it was dark in there, but I could be wrong. I thought it was the roof closed. That's interesting. I mean, we did have rain one I'm of those days during <laughs> Yeah. Come on, do the research. Yeah. Okay, so did you, okay, that was your first Grand Slam title. Do you remember how it felt? I mean, I remember the entire tournament because it was kind of surreal, like I said, being in the singles and then having the disappointment first of losing in the semifinals. And we kind of touched on 
um, the match with Monica, but then to still be in the doubles. And I mean, you know, if you're in a grand slam, you're trying to go for a title, a win is a win, you know? So it was a way for me to kind of take the disappointment of the singles and transfer that to the doubles. And so I remember the doubles title just being so proud and being so happy. And, you know, it was a tough match already, you know, with you guys. And I didn't know if we were gonna win that one. And so it was a little bit shocking for me to be actually be holding up the trophy at the end of those of those two weeks and having played my partner in the semi in the quarterfinals in the singles for us to kind of regroup and recover and still be friends and be able to play and come together like it was just all kind of surreal it was amazing now did you um, play with her well, again i don't remember you guys played much more we, we didn't play much we played one other tournament <laughs> we played like a clay court event and we won it <laughs> wait you were 2-0 oh in the two tournaments you played in? Two and oh, we, <laughs> we never Never lost. So that's, you know, that's our record. <laughs> I ended up getting injured. So that year, um, kind of April, and we played the clay court tournament then. I think it was Amelia Island, but don't quote me on that. But as my wrist had started hurting during that tournament, I found out I had a, a stress fracture and I didn't play the rest of the year. So yeah, it just circumstances did not allow us to play together again, but unbelievable. It's two and oh. So it was in that same summer that Mary Jo, myself, and you, we were actually all on the Olympic team together. You were there, ended up having to pull out. You wanted yeah. to play. Yes. You couldn't end up playing. Am I back? Yes. I didn't, know <laughs> I didn't know at the time that my wrist was fractured. You know, I had a, a broken bone in it. It just had been hurting. I kept trying to, you know, rehab it, go through all of the processes and get back. But I just could never get rid of the pain. And I found out, of course, um, later on that, I needed surgery on it. So, but yeah, I thought I might be able to play the Olympics and I was so excited to be on the team with you guys. I mean, it was probably the one time, one moment I kind of wish had been different. You know, I always think back to nine, but I mean, you won it that year. So, hey, I mean, no, that but was huge. Honestly, I always go back to one of my greatest moments in my, I guess you'd say professional career was the opening ceremonies where we all walked in together. Do you remember that? Don't, Dude, don't tell I, me you were like, oh, that I don't remember. <laughs> no, it head. was like the moment, okay? I mean, unbelievable walking, you know, down an instant with all the athletes and the lights and, you know, just knowing that these are the greatest athletes in their sport in the world. And we're here. We're one of them. Like, and do you remember, was, like, the entrance to get into the stadium in Atlanta was, like, really steep. And we got to the top. And Billy, Billy Jean, our captain, was uh -huh. like a little bit nervous, like about trying to walk down it. So we all linked arms, and it was Mary Jo and yeah. Monica, you, me, Billy, and Jean. Yeah. And we all walked in with our arms uh, linked to enter the stadium. <laughs> and the stadium, we had been waiting for like six or seven hours to walk yeah. in, and the place went crazy when the Americans walked in. It's truly it like every, I got the goosebumps. It was like chills. Yeah, yeah, it was like I'm like, just unbelievable unbelievable feeling and I mean you guys you think about you know with Monica and you and Mary Jo obviously you know I'm on the team but I mean you guys were like stars you know and so everybody was wanting to see the the tech I swear it was incredible and you don't think about that when you are in your sport and immersed just in tennis but when you get out onto the the world stage and you see all of these other sports and all of the you know great athletes but you are like what people they want autographs from you guys, you know, it's like that kind of thing. I and mean, the Olympics, it, it was incredible just being a part of those, those moments. Yeah. Another funny story about us that maybe uh, people don't know so much about. Um, we both have terrible knees, which we, <laughs> we laugh about all the time. But you put well, in... You um, have one good one, right? I have one you good one. One good one. It's the opposite. It was in, <laughs> I think it was January of 2002. I had hurt my knee in November and had tried to rest it to see if it could get better. It was at the end of the year championships. I had to pull out of the final because I injured my knee in the semis. I rested it in January. They're like, it's not getting better. You need surgery. Mm -hmm. So I went to the Stedman Clinic in Vail. I came out of surgery. Um, and the next day I went to rehab or PT and there were you. You were there. 
Yeah. yeah. I was what like, are you doing here? We didn't have cell phones back then, so it wasn't as easy to like keep tabs on your friends. We and there we are in Vail. Yep. I mean, but that he was the, like one of the foremost the guys. He's amazing. And, amazing. Yeah, went to Richard's, Dr. Richard Stedman. And yeah, I that was my second time being there because I'd had back to back knee surgeries. I had one beginning of 2001 and then January of 2002. And I was able to come back after that. But yeah, we have been connected. <laughs> I wish not that one, though. Long time. That was like a, not a good way, but <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Now I'm, I'm curious because we were talking about the Olympics. I have to just ask you, what was that like? I mean, that was, you know, you winning the Olympics, you know, there had been so much pressure, I think for you, because, you know, you, they were always kind of wondering, okay, when is Lindsay going to step up? You had such a big game. There was so much that uh, people thought about what you were going to do in your career to finally win the Olympics then that kind of kicked everything off. But what was that like? to be able to play and then stay at be standing at the end of the, you know, the week. Well, I see what you did there because I was supposed to ask you questions. I know you that, but just I tried to I turn that around. Turn it around. I'm getting mine in. <laughs> I got to ask. I said I would only do this because I was get to talk to you. I didn't have to answer questions, but um, yes. you know, it, <laughs> it was, it, it was, it meant everything to me. And you look back in, in our careers, um, you know, winning the U.S. Open and the Olympics, I always put it on the same level. And part of that was the opening ceremonies we were talking about. It truly was one of the most amazing experiences in my life. I mean, in tennis, okay, maybe we get, like at the U.S. Open, we get a lot of people in Arthur Ashe Stadium. Um, mm -hmm. But that was something different. There were like 100,000 people in that stadium in Atlanta that cheered when we walked in. And I think it was the first time I just felt that there wasn't this, um, spotlight on me or because it was about so much more than tennis you know we'd go in the right. village and there was all these other athletes and you were like oh they're the gymnasts and oh they're the swimmers and this is like amazing no one really cares what happens in the tennis um, yeah. and so it was like I always was like oh I want to go play my match and get back to the village we were 20 years old it was like I always wondered what it would have been like to go to college um, you know, you miss out on that social aspect a little bit about going on the tour at 15, 16, like we did. Um, and I felt like that was the place. It was just remarkable there. So I think that that just kind of put me in a different mindset than I had ever been at like a major where I was like, oh, everyone's talking about the tennis or, oh, I'm, it's going to be a failure if I lose. And I think once I got that out of my system, I was allowed, I, it just freed me up and it freed me up more so mentally than anything else. And then I went forward. It took me a couple more years to play better at the majors, but that was like the first step towards that. And um, I credit that Olympics being a huge turning point for sure. That's amazing. I mean, and you saying it like that, that makes so much sense. You mm -hmm. know, that, you know, that feeling, you know, kind of not having gone to college, but feeling a little bit like that in the village was amazing yeah. the way it was out in Atlanta, how we could walk around and go into these, you know, Have you areas. ever been back to Georgia Tech? No. No, me neither. I'm always, like, scared to go because the memories and, like, what I have in my mind, you yeah. know, look so different. You're like, it was oh, it's so small or something. Yeah, you don't want it to be less than perfect. <laughs> no. Exactly. We had one year, maybe, of a tournament at that Stone Mountain tennis facility. And then yeah. I think that's gone now, too, unfortunately. Yeah, it didn't. And, and I mean, it was kind of far out a little bit. You know, it was great for the Olympics, the way everything was yeah. put together. Uh, it was it was tough as a tournament on its own, but I still have those memories. Have not been back. I'm going to hold on to them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's good. Well, okay, so now we say we've always kind of been kind of connected, and now we work together at Tennis Channel. <laughs> I mean, like, what is going on? I How did that it was so funny. One of my favorite things is like uh, at Wimbledon when we stayed together was that that 2019. Yes. Yeah. Not last. Not obviously didn't go Wimbledon with. didn't happen in 2020. <laughs> but oh my gosh, for for people that are listening, we would stay up so late drinking our wine, <laughs> chatting about everything that we've been Life through. Life has changed. So when we used to room together, no wine or anything, of course, never. But now, now we have matured. <laughs> we do our phone calls home. Yeah. We talk to. The husbands, the kids, <laughs> and we are relaxed. <laughs> so, we had to get like the drama of the home front out of the way. Like what, what kid was freaking out? <laughs> Normally it was mine, not yours. Harper's a, a lot more well behaved than, than mine are. <laughs> yeah. 
gosh. Oh. Well, you know, there's some questions, and I don't know if you want to answer no, this. If you know how to work this, that you take this over because I. So there's a question from um, Decorick, I guess is how you say it. But uh, do you remember the U.S. Open 2002 match between, I guess, me and Venus? Did you play? Was that me? 2002. I lost to her in 2000 and 2001. Is that, that yeah? That yeah. I think it was because I played Venus probably two or three times at the U.S. Open, and I lost to her each time. It was it usually was like in the fourth round, third or fourth round. And um, this particular match, I think it was this. That wasn't the seven five one though. That was in oh four. So I don't remember the two thousand and two as well. I think I, I played, played her. In, I think I played her in oh four too. That's so funny. Yeah, tough match in oh four, and it was like my last U.S. Open semi healthy, and so I kind of remember that one, but I don't remember the two thousand and two as much. She just beat me. Do you remember your last <laughs> tournament? When was it? So the last tournament I played was like this small challenger. I played doubles with Ashley Harkle Road. I literally, this was in 2007, I could not get back healthy. Uh. And so I, I kept trying, you know, we'd go train and try to, I couldn't play. Finally, I said mid, towards the end of the year, I'd play, a, you know, small kind of circuit event and I could only play doubles and I was still hurting. But that was my last match playing with her. My last match on tour that I kind of remember that was significant other than that 04 US Open was playing the US Open in 2006. They gave me a wild card. And I kind of knew it was probably going to be my last US Open, um, which it was. And it was incredible. I was so grateful for the wild card. Couldn't quite play 100%, but I think I lost to Nicole Vitasova, who was, yeah. you know, kind of up and coming young player. Uh, but yeah, a little bit bittersweet because I couldn't go out fully healthy, but so many other good memories. Okay, someone wrote in and it already passed me by. So I'm sorry I didn't get the name, but someone wanted to talk to you about your infamous match with Yana Novotna at the French Open. You were down, okay, a little known fact how we're connected. Chanda was playing Yana Novotna out on the main stadium court at Roland Garros. And guess who was following her? That was me. I was supposed to play a little, uh, excuse me, a young up and coming Swiss player named Martina Hingis. You after, guys were the next. After oh, Ruben no. and Novotna, who Chanda got down five love in the third. And I'm like doing my warm ups and my stretches. And guess what? The match goes for like another, what do you think, 45 minutes to an hour. How did you do that? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. It, it was crazy, this match, you know, it because I won the first set and like it was huge. You know, Yana was top seed. We were on Chartier. This was, you know, my first kind of would have been my first big win at a major. And so I kind of was thinking about it right after winning the first set. And I promptly lost the second set. And then in the third was still irritated with myself, got down five love, 40 love. 40 love, and I forgot that point. I was down 40 love. <laughs> So, yeah, you were right to be warming up <laughs> thinking you would be on court shortly. Um, and I just remember that moment because that uh, that French Open, that Roland Garros, my mom had come. We had an apartment, beautiful view of the Seine. And, you know, my mom had brought some food from home and was cooking. And it was just nice. And I was just enjoying it. And I thought this went through my mind on court. And I thought, man, OK, I'm about to lose this match. I accepted it. Okay, it's fine, but let's stay a little bit longer. And literally, that was the main thought I had at that moment. I just want to stay a little bit longer. Just one more point, because it's been nice here. <laughs> and one more point turned to a second point and a third. And I just started making balls. Like, of course, she got nervous. She got tight, a bit of a choke. Um, I mean, you have to say it was a, a choke, right? But I think at the end, it showed me and it just taught me so much about the mindset you have to have, kind of going into a match and throughout, you know, you have to focus on the right things and not worry about the winning and losing. Sometimes it happens, but I learned how to pull myself back more often. And so that kind of helped me in my career. But it was it was unbelievable the way I started coming back. And it was just, again, surreal. Because okay. I didn't think so you, that match. You had, you saved three match points in that game. Were there any other match points? I think there were, I had nine against me in total, I think. Oh, come on. Oh, my gosh. So this is pretty funny. I'm like, 
I'm pretty sure this is, um, you know how crazy I am. Like I'm like mentally like a, a very weak person. No. So no, I was, yeah. this is a true story. Sorry. I was up <laughs> four love in the third against Tingus and lost the game on purpose because I thought I was going to be up five love in the third and lose it just town upon the tin against you. <laughs> and I remember I lost the game and my coach Robert at the time knew it. And he was like, oh my gosh, she's so crazy. So oh, crazy. Yeah of that 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 still I remember that I can't. that I did not know that gives me some insight <laughs> you know that you know I'm not dealing with like a full deck that gives me some real insight here <laughs> explains a few things mm -hmm. okay so it's we're supposed to talk 15 minutes we've talked 25 we could talk for hours we know that I have to go yeah. get ready for the show in a few but before we I, we end this Australian Open's going on what are you, who are your picks for the men's and women's singles titles? I've been going with Djokovic and Osaka. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, it's kind of punting, you know, it's some of the usual suspects, but I mean, Djokovic, he just fought, seems to find a way on these courts. And, you know, he didn't look bad. He's also one of those players that can build. And he just, he looks great. Um, I think Osaka, for me, similarly, she has looked so solid through tough moments you know you, you think about everything she did last year and how she still won the u.s open and just the statements she made and she just seems to understand herself and who she is and what she stands for and that's huge you know as a player especially when you're going through these tough moments under pressure in front of stadiums full of people um i think for her that for me is is a huge deal what about you who are your picks well hold on can you say hi to our producer bob monsbach hey Chanda. <laughs> Bob, a long time no see. This How are you? Instagram live, so be careful. Don't say anything bad, you. Don't put Lindsay I'm at good. risk. Bob. I get you want to ask me for my tennis <laughs> expertise? You want to know my tennis expertise? Yeah, we need you on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, okay, so getting back to Osaka, do you think it's amazing at her young age now she has such a clear vision of who she is and what she believes yeah. in and like zero fear to discuss it? I love it. No, I mean, you think about how tough that is to get to that, that space. And, you know, even, you know, for me, speaking for myself, I mean, I was always a pretty balanced person, but that was a struggle, you know, and, and a lot of people maybe didn't know, but, you know, to try to figure out kind of myself and what I stood for and, and how I wanted to be and kind of take control and, you know, be my own kind of voice and advocate in some ways, you know, that took a that was a process that took years beyond you know the age she's at now so I think it's pretty incredible that she's gotten to this space and she's obviously still growing and still you know learning and maturing in different ways but to be in this solid a place I think is is huge well I'm 44 and I haven't figured that out yet so <laughs> wait when it's your birthday when it, did I miss it it's um it's the 18th, the 18th. What is that? okay good I was it had or the week after I have it on my phone calendar, but I just yeah. want to make sure you're going to be 45. You're going to be older than me for like three or four months. I love yeah. rubbing that in. Every year. <laughs> uh, every, every year that happens. <laughs> but next week is Mardi Gras first. Okay. But of course with COVID. Yeah. How do you celebrate with that now? You no, know, just, you know, have some king cake and play some music at home. You know, do the family thing. You, you realize you but, did skip over Valentine's Day. Uh, yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I didn't actually have to go to work, but I think I do. So fun. I mean, the time at me. And thanks everybody for joining and for listening and for sending in questions. If sorry, we could not get to everybody's questions and comments, but we have enjoyed you, and I've enjoyed you, Lindsay. I know. Let's Thank do this you. again, and we'll take more questions, and we'll we'll focus on another match that you beat me at. Like, let's. <laughs> no, we'll have something to focus on. It'll be more you. No, no, no. I don't want that. Yeah. Yes, we're going to make you uncomfortable. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay, you take care. We'll talk soon. All right. You too. Bye. Bye.